record. Okay. Okay, so um, animals. Yeah, I had a pet pigeon. I've had lots of pet pigeons actually in my time. And uh, it was in fact, uh, um, yeah, I did actually ask a question of Hawkins on this uh, through his radio sh through the radio show he was doing at the time. Uh, probably not his favorite question, but uh, anyway, I did ask it because I was, I was very upset when I had killed my animal by mistake, my pe my pigeon, pet pigeon, which is like my son. But um, and that was the question I had. You know, what happens? You know, what what's his lot? And Hawkins did talk a lot about animals and the animal kingdom. Uh, generally, um, when you go above two hundred. Uh, in the level of consciousness, when you reach integrity, uh, you usually earn the right um, eventually to incarnate as the highest form of life in this world, which is a human. So, so the highest, um, I think, uh, you know, Krishna talks about this. Uh, the Rig Vita, an, a famous ancient Indian text, says that um, it's through sacrifice to something larger than oneself, that one earns the right at some point, maybe in this lifetime or future lifetime, to enter the karmic merit of whatever that is. You know, so like if a human being gives his life and his will and his consciousness and everything completely to God, then he earns the right of enlightenment, oneness with God, complete uh, freedom from this world of separation and fear. So that's this thing. But what about animals? You know, in Hinduism, they say that there's a karmic loop. You see, you're earning karma for your next incarnation until the loop ends, as Buddha said, uh, with enlightenment. So um, Hawkins, through muscle testing research, said that generally most animals have what's called a collective soul. You know, they have a collective soul, but that's not permanently the case. Uh, and said as well that some animals have very high levels of consciousness uh, as well. Uh, especially those, you could say certain animals are incarnated with certain, a uh, certain karmic, well, maybe karmic contracts is not. Some animals get born to be incarnated as food. Some animals get incarnated and they're likely to be incarnated as pets for animals. Uh, sorry, pets for animals, pets for humans. God almighty, <laughs> that's a funny world. But um, so it's like, you know, like we're incarnated. Our parents are not by accident. Uh, the country of origin is not by accident. Like some animals are incarnated and their lot seems to be, they'll be in a factory for, for animals. And some are incarnated, they're going to be your pet dog or your pet goldfish or whatever. You know, and they're, there is a thing of a karmic merit when you're remember the the karmic rule when you give your life to something higher uh, than yourself I, you sacrifice your life for the involvement of whatever involvement of the consciousness of the planet for god whatever then um then there is um that um there is that karmic merit for the next lifetime so i do see that you know for example if an animal was to um, sacrifice its life for its owner or give a life of service to its owner, to a human, or even sacrifice its life for um, uh, human consumption uh, in a way for some karmic contract, then it would gain karmic merit for that sacrifice. Um, so that comes out with muscle testing as true. So it's almost like this world has the option for sacrificing to something higher. So I do believe uh, with what uh, Hawkins has said with karmic muscle testing, what Krishna has said with karmic merit, what the Rig Vita, the ancient Indian texts have said are true, which is that there is um, this, you don't get incarnated as a bird, as an animal, as a cow. Um, and when you get incarnated as a human being, that's the highest level, but then, and also the option for enlightenment with uh, the incarnation as a human being to contemplate the existence of self. So, so yeah, so if you're worried about your pet, you know, it's probably given a life of, it's given its life in service to you, which in my view is a, it is incarnated to give a life of service to human being, which is in fact a great life, you know, not to be like a wild cat with other cats, um, killing mice or whatever, 
to to be serving a human being and to sacrifice its life to for um, uh, you know giving service to a human being I think in its next lifetime it earns huge merit and um, if you feel sad with the loss of your pet I mean I encourage praying praying for its spiritual evolution sending it light and love and um, and that that because we're all one at a certain level there is only oneness and so if you're at a higher consciousness level you can pray for it I, I, I feel confident that it will benefit it in some way in its journey okay wherever it is whether it's incarnated or unincarnated so I'll stop there on that question